Peter, back at Capello, uh, having left after 10 years, what's your first thought as you come back in the door? It's it's a good thought, it's definitely a good thought. Um, you come in, you see the pitch and you think, oh, I remember scoring and playing and doing well. And Does a particular game immediately come to mind? No, n- not really a particular game, just kind of the surroundings. And it's, I think it's a good old-fashioned ground. Um, and a lot of people have said that uh, it's it's always good to come back and I've been to a couple of pre-season games this year so um, yeah it's always puts a smile on my face when I come back A native of North Shields but you've played all your senior football in Scotland Yes it, it was a case of uh, I played with Newcastle Blue Star who mm-hmm. was um, a semi-professional team in Newcastle and uh, John Connolly who then got the Queen of the South job um, he was manager of Ashington in the same division as Newcastle Blue Star, so he, that, that's where the connection was from. Um, he liked what he saw when I played against him, and I think I scored actually a couple of goals against his Ashington team. So he gave me the phone call to go and play professional, which obviously I snapped up at a, in a heartbeat. Um, the the, the travelling was never an issue. I just wanted to try and better my career, and that was the case. I was going to ask you because a uh, native of North Shields, uh, but you've never actually moved further north than Greenock. So is that because you want to keep your links? With <laughs> I think it's it's always something I think about. My family, if, if ever I've moved or I've thought about a move, um, there's been a couple of cases, even um, being here at Morton, I've had a chance to maybe move, um, not so much north, but wherever I've had a chance to move or thought about moving, my family always comes into it um, because, the, you know, none of my parents or my brothers are that drive, so it's it's difficult for them to get to games. So the further I get away, the, further, the more difficult it is for them to be kind of with me or or me going down to see them obviously being full time here at Morton over the 10 years it was it was difficult to get down there you know Mm. looking back to when you arrived um, big decision to move from Queen of the South Um, no it wasn't because um, I'd been asking the manager to to try and progress and go full time I was doing really well down there at that point um, and I had a good conversation with John Connolly the manager and he understood they were only part time um, and I wanted to further my career and go full time and try and progress and, and there was a couple of offers I think um, Partick Thistle come in with a £20,000 offer and then Morton put in 30000 um, which obviously the, the Queen of the South accepted I think Queen of the South described the original offers as derisory yes uh, was that <laughs> the, as well yeah there you go so um, I, I think the reason for that was bef- before that I'd been doing extra well and, and there was a I don't want to get too big headed by seeing a host of clubs, but th- there was some SBL clubs and a couple of clubs down south. You so know, what inquiring. tips you in favour of Morton? Yeah, but basically, the, the, there was two concrete offers, and I was desperate to be full time. Um, the one that got accepted was Morton, um, so I came up. I spoke to John Connolly at the time, um, and and Douglas Ray, the chairman, um, and they were ambitious. They had just come up from the third division, um, and and you know it was it was a team going on the up. And I wanted to join that. Obviously, being full time was, was the big plus for me, trying to further my career and better myself as a football player. Um, and yeah, that first season must have been very disappointing. Leading the league for so long and then finishing fourth. It was. It was. It was a tough. Probably the toughest part of my football career. I'll be dead honest with you. Um, it, it really was. It was a testing time because we we, we were so high to, to get right up to Christmas and, and be doing so well and 12 points clear and, and everybody talks about the allegations and all this and that was a really really tough time in my, not just my football career, my life really sure. you know, I kind of doubted for my, my football in existence because, just because of the accusations so it, it was a it was a tough time but thankfully we, we came through it um, not you, you'd probably be a lot stronger as a team uh, as a result of that well, well I think there, there was a few changes after that season there was mm-hmm. a few changes of, of ins and outs um, which I, I think was probably needed not because of, of any allegations or anything but just because of what the actual allegations did to people yeah. um, some people are stronger than others and thankfully enough I, I was lucky enough to to see it through and, and progress. A difficult start, but after that, n- nine excellent years. Fantastic years. Um, again, it, it, there was difficult times as, as a group and individual, which we keep in the dressing room. But you know, some really, really good times. That you know, it's been fantastic. Some great nights here. You know, Kilmarnock games and things like that. Cup games where there's a really good atmosphere. You know, and that's what football. That's why you play football. As play a player, like yeah. As a player, you started off as a striker, centre yep. forward. 
uh, Jim McAnally converted you to defender, and it seems as if you've played just a bit everywhere. <laughs> I have, yeah, I have. It's, it's some goals as well. It, it's, I think it shows you the type of person that I am. You know, I, I'm a one for. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, I'll do anything for my teammates in, in the club and the team that I'm at. I'm loyal. Um, and if that means playing right back, centre half, striker, and goal even if, if need be. But I haven't yet. <laughs> I haven't yet. <laughs> but not every player has the ability to do that. It says a lot for you that you can, you can feel, I take it you feel comfortable no matter where you're playing. Well, I think it comes, when I was young, when I was really young, I say this about young kids nowadays, I, I think it's a thing that doesn't happen anymore. I, I always had a ball at my feet. I'd, be go, I'd maybe go for some sugar and, and tea bags to the shop but I would have a football with me. Um, I don't think you see that nowadays, um, and I think it's kind of a the, the streetwise kind of way. Um, and gra- I've always, always played football, and I think that's kind of helped me um, to adapt to, to certain positions on the field. And I'm kind of, I want to go into coaching now. And being a player, I've always kind of listened and took things on board, and um, that's one thing that's helped me throughout playing in those various positions. But it's still. So you're a striker at heart, I take it. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> For the simple reason, I love scoring goals. Simple. And you seem to be able to do it no matter which position you're playing. Anyway. Well, well yeah, I wouldn't say I'm perfect all the time, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the odd mistake. But uh, yeah, if, you know, it, I just love playing football. That that's the main thing, you know. Um, and again, whether it be centre half, back, right back, striker, midfield. Nine-one win against four for in the league in 2006-2007. You hit four. Talk us through them. The first one here was a flick on. I think it was Jamie Stevenson. It bounced. I caught it quite a sweet actually, and it's, yeah. it's found the net. Um, that was the first one. Um, started us off on what was going to be a, a memorable day, especially for myself. And a great crowd for. Yep, definitely. Olivia. Second one was was definitely handball. Um, <laughs> took it down with my forearm and then just put it in with a side foot. But the record show it was a goal, so it obviously wasn't handball. Yeah, no, 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 that counts, definitely counts. Um, this was this was a chance, I think, 
Well, this is the goal. This is Jamie Stevenson. Jim McAllister does well. Jamie gets it out of his feet and puts it into the net. This day, uh, um, it could have been anything. It was it finished 9-1, but it could have been anything. Um, that's Paul McGowan, who was a, a really good player for us. Um, that must put, one of the few that didn't go in. Putting one by the post. Um, I think uh, this is my hat-trick goal. Jamie Stevenson again, who was a good player, laying it off yeah. and keeping the knee good over finish. the ball and getting a strike. I'm not sure about the celebration. What that's all about, I do not know. <laughs> it's all about scoring Just, a just excitement, just excitement, I think. It's as you feel at the time, isn't it? Uh, this is, I think this is my fourth goal. Player mm. 1-2 gets into Jamie Stevenson again, who was influential in this game. And you sort of stole it, didn't you? The ball kind of fall into my feet and just a wee chip over the goalkeeper. It was one of them games where everything just fell. Everything just fell right. Um, and as I say, we could have won double figures. Penalty, which I wanted to take to, to try and get my fifth, but... Jamie probably deserved it for his performance. He was having none of it anyway, I take it. <laughs> um, this one, Jim McAllister, who's now um, playing up with Dundee, doing well, tipped over the bar by the goalkeeper. Chris Miller, another player playing in the SBL, doing well. Um, he's went round the goalkeeper for a good finish. Made those great runs into the box. He was a really, really good player for us. Really good. And one we missed when he left. Kevin Finlayson down the right side. Uh, great cross Bobby Lynn who you can see by the celebration was delighted to score I think he was having a tough time and never scored for a while so that was pleasing for him and, and this one um, goal against when you're up so many you can kind of get complacent and we did that and it's a good finish by Andy Jackson I was going to say what happened there again another assist um, I think that's five out the goals Jamie Stevenson assisted five and scored two. Chris Templeman puts it in. So it was a good day had by all. And as you can see, the crowd, absolutely fantastic.
399 appearances. Yes, 399. Well, one I'm, short of 400. Well, I'm not one short <laughs> because I played my testimonial match here, which was the 400. So, <laughs> so you got I, I get a good fitting end um, to a 10 year career at Morton. So, yeah, it was great. At what point did you? Well, let's go. Let's go back to start again. Did, did you come from a footballing family? Were you, were you? No, no, not not really. Nothing professionally. Um, my dad played, and my, my uncles and cousins they kind of got together and played, and, and it was it was it was kind of like pub football, you know. And it, but they always played a Saturday and a Sunday, and they were always eager to play, and I would always go along and watch and and again take things in. And, and funny enough, when I was uh, fourteen. I played for my dad's pub team, right. which was obviously illegal. He he got injured, but my dad's name is the same, um, which was against all laws. And I played. I was fourteen years of age, um, and I scored four. <laughs> and all the all the all the people playing, my dad's friends, said, oh, is he going to play next week? My dad said, no chance. He's only fourteen. You know, he, <laughs> he was kind of giving me a chance, just dipping my toe in a little bit to see what it was like. But um, yeah, I wouldn't say I've been from a football background, although there's been a lot of interest in football. Um, from my family and that type of stuff and I've always been backed by them to, to go and try and progress and do the best I can At school, <coughs> around about the age of 14 were you thinking this is what I want to do professionally or did you have other ideas in mind? I think e- even before 14 I, yeah, I, n- I, never, I never shirked anything at school but I always put all my interests into football always, um, it was always in the back of my mind whether I'd be in a, I don't know, a maths class or English class or whatever it may be I was always thinking when I was going to kick the ball next, and, and that sounds kind of silly and childish, but that's that's the way I was, and, and um, thankfully enough, it, it's it's kind of paid off, and I've had a, a half decent career which I've enjoyed, and um, hopefully I've pleased a lot of people. We talked about the problems when, uh, shortly after you arrived, but the highlights there must be a number of highlights, yeah. like memorable goals. What uh, what match particularly stands out in, in your mind as, as uh, this was just. The, way it be, you know? the match that stands out actually is the Kilmarnock game here. I, I go, what a night that was! It was the place just took off, and and we we kind of we kind of kick started it. We started the game well, and and the crowd just they bought into it and they loved it. And I remember seeing a lot of young kids around the front, around the front of the the stands, and thinking, you know what, this is what it's all about. This is this is why you're a football player. I played it right back that night up against um, Stephen Naismith. Um, thankfully enough, he, he didn't do too well, and, and I played pretty well. So, um, but a lot of it wasn't just individuals that night. It was a, it was a great team performance, and, and I think in the end we won comfortably. Mm. Um, and there could have been no arguments from the from their camp. Memorable goals. Um, you picked uh, so many to choose from, but uh, there must be one or two that particularly stand there, out in your memory. There is, is for one reason or another. My hundredth goal actually was was here. Um, was a penalty against Queen of the South and then my 101st goal I, I think I hit from something like 35 or 40 yards from somewhere over here and my left foot you um, remember those don't you? yes <laughs> that, that, that's probably my most pleased I remember I was I was hyped up because I'd scored my 100th and I, I'd thought about it and I was really excited that I'd done it and pleased and and, and then I think it was a long clearance actually and, and a fellow player who I used to play with Ryan McGuffey was playing for Queen of the South and he was marking me and it went over the top and I'm not the quickest so I thought I better just hit it as quick as I can and thankfully enough it, it's went over the keeper into the net so that's I remember you always remember the spectaculars don't you You know but you get the same thing I, I say to my the kids the under 14 so I'm working with now you get the same thing if you tap one in from half a yard as you do from 40 yards so uh, just keep working at it but that's um, that's definitely one of my favourites. Ten years with the same club, that's quite unusual for a player to stay with one club for that long. What was it about Morton that made you feel, I feel at home here? I've I've, I've thought about this at length over the years probably and and the one thing I can put my hand on is is not having the, I was saying not having the greatest to start, I did have a decent start initially. But that season, to start with, that impact that first season had towards the end, I think that kind of, I wanted to give something back. Mm-hmm. Even though I, I, there was only one thing I did wrong, and that was my performances. One up to scratch towards the end of the season, but I, I just wanted to give something back after that. And, and after the same contract after contract after contract, and gradually as you get to six, seven, eight years, you think, you know what, 
they've been loyal to me, so I, I think it's only right that I be loyal back, and and that's the way. That's kind of the way it was. I had a good working relationship with the chairman, um, and all managers. To be honest, um, I, I was always. I'm easy to work with. Um, I work hard for you. I'll try and get people around me to work hard. Um, and looking at the number of games you've played in the 10 years, it's a far higher games to season ratio than most of the other players are up at the top number of appearances. I mean, you've managed an awful lot of games in, in 10 years. So fitness must have been a, a big part of that. Managed to stay reasonably fit. Uh, I've all, uh, touch wood, um, injury-wise, I've been pretty lucky. Um, fitness-wise, uh, I've always kind of battled fitness-wise, weight weight problems and that type of stuff. I've always kind of battled with that. Um, and... and Worked at it, but thankfully enough, I've, I've had a little bit of extra ability on top of that. That's kind of got me through and and, and helped me through those times. Um, but yeah, fitness. Lucky enough, I've, I've stayed fit and done okay. Sixty-four thousand dollar question for any player: Do you actually enjoy training? I actually do. Uh, uh, they all, say, I, they all I, say that when it's talking in public, don't they? I'll be honest <laughs> with you. When I was younger, when I was younger, I was that enthusiastic. I didn't even. I probably didn't even realise I was training. And he realised I was working hard because I was that, you know, excited about training. As the years progress and you get to 25, 26, 27, 28, there are, there are days when when you find difficult and you, and you have to try and dig deep and motivate yourself and, and do it now. But as I've got older, beyond that, getting into 28, 29, 30 and now 33, I do enjoy training because I pick things up. I obviously, I, I want to be a coach now and a, and a manager if possible. Um, and... I look for little things to pick up from players. Uh, obviously, I still work hard myself as best I can. Um, but I, I've started to enjoy training to pick things up. Even, even some of the sessions, managers that I've worked under are, are, are putting on. You know, Alan Moore, over the last few years, um, I've picked up a few sessions that he's put on that I've enjoyed. And um, I've noted them down. And that, that's something that I, when I do become a manager or a, or a coach, then I'll, uh, I'll put into practice. So, so yeah. At what point did you decide coaching was something you wanted to do? Around about that, about 27, 26, 27, 28, I thought, yeah. Is it a feeling that you start to realise you're not going to be playing forever and you still want to be involved with the game? Is that what suggests coaching or is there something else that motivates you? I think, I've, I was actually speaking to my manager last night down at Ireland and I, I like the thought of the responsibility of being a manager. Um, because it's a big responsibility mm. to look after a football club and, and try and gather it and push it in the right direction. I like that responsibility and, and I think w when I was 26, 27, 28 I started thinking about it. You do start thinking, you know, I've maybe only got six or seven years left, maybe not even that if, if, if I get an injury, touch wood, but um, you, you, you do start thinking about it then and, and again picking up the things from managers and players and that type of thing what to do what not to do and all this type of stuff so um, it's it's football's all I know as well you know it's I don't know anything else um, so I'd be foolish to start looking in other avenues when I've got what I think is a wealth of experience to pass on to other people and hopefully develop their footballing careers. Sometime in the future, have you offered the manager's job at Capital? Oh, of course, yeah, I would love to come back. Um, <coughs> I think that's that's no doubt. Um, I'm, you're, I'm still, you're still a fan? You still look oh, definitely. I, I've, I've been quoted to say I came here as a football player, but I've left as a football fan. Um, and, and any game I can be to when I'm not training or playing myself, then I'll be here without a shadow of a doubt. And, and that that will go on forever now. I'm, a, I'm I class myself as a green out boy. I've got a family here now, and um, we're comfortable, you know, um, to, to to raise my daughter and stuff up in Greenock. And um, this is basically me. So yes, I'll be back. I'll be back. I enjoy coming back. Just like today, walking in and get a smile on your face, and just remember the good times, you know. Um, so yeah. Put the record straight. 121 goals. 122. <laughs> the official record set, man says 121. Oh, right, okay, okay. Can you? No, no, he no, says no. 122. Did no, you I, score the testimonial? He's not. No, no, that. I didn't. I did in the warm up. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody scores the warm up. That great. Uh, <clears throat> you, what was it? What was the last goal you scored for Morton? The last goal I scored was Dunfermline. Um, it was here. We, we were having a wee push. We were having a wee push for the towards the title last year. Um, we played Dunfermline who were also up there um, 
but, but unfortunately they got the points deduction and all this stuff happened to them but um, I think I scored the, the third or the fourth goal I'm not 100% sure there was a shot for we Fred he should, probably should have scored um, the keeper's parried it and it's come out and again a wee tap and see right place at the right time right place right time that's as what it has say. been throughout <laughs> your career I'm sure the Morton fans will be saying that about the last 10 years Peter a pleasure to talk to you all the best uh, Anne and, and in the future Magic thank you very much appreciate that